Joining me on the Nielsen Network this morning is Stephen Van Collar, the CEO of the EOH Group. Stephen, thanks very much for your time. Market reacting very well to your trading update yesterday and uh, the share price rallying extensively, celebrating your debt repayments being made timelessly. How are you feeling at this point? Uh, thanks, Brandon, and good morning. Um, it's a sort of a mixed bag, really. I mean, I, I've always said that I think the share price hasn't performed in, a, in accordance with, you know, what we've achieved at the business. Uh, some of that's been, you know, obviously through COVID, people worrying about, you know, companies with high debt. Uh, we have bought ours down a lot. I mean, when I, when I started uh, just under 18 months ago, it was 4.1 billion. You know, today it's 2.6. Uh, that's a big ask for a you know 10% margin company. So I think the team's done an amazing job. And uh, you know what's also helped us with COVID is uh, really accelerate some of our cost savings. We were doing that anyway as part of our uh, you know restructuring the group and everything. So we were a little bit lucky going into COVID that we had a year to get it right and. Uh, you know, put in the right people, put in the right processes. As, as I said last time, I didn't have daily cash flow. I get daily cash flow. I get daily debtors and creditors. I get weekly sales now. Uh, it's a very different organization than it was. So it's been much easier to manage. Stephen, and on the also, cost saving, you set yourself a, a target just as you went into uh, the COVID-19 period of 400 million, almost 100 million rand a month. And uh, according to the trading update, you are surpassing that target. Yes. Um, so what we decided to do is obviously going into COVID, you've got no idea what's coming at you. Uh, I sort of likened it to, you know, the enemy's coming, but you don't know how big their guns are. So you don't wait for them to arrive. You actually put your best defenses up. So we, you know, had an estimate from, you know, just listening to the government and uh, economists, let's plan for a 10% down in, um, in turnover. And that was 100 million a month. And so we decided to save 400 million for the last four months of the year, being April, May, June, and, and July. And uh, we've managed to do that. And so our last salary cuts will be at the end of June. And we, we would have actually saved more than the 400. And that's allowed us to make the payments to the banks, make sure that we've got, uh, you know, kept our cash flow stable. So going into the next quarter, we're feeling a lot better and well prepared. You know, clearly it's an unknown. So we need to remain vigilant and uh, just watch what happens. Just on those salary cuts, so you will return to normal as a group from the 1st of July? Correct. You had taken a 25% cut as an executive team and the rest of the organization 20%. Yeah, they took 20% for the first two months and then a uh, 10% for June, given that our collections and our cash flows were you know, better than expected. Obviously, turnover down a bit, but we've managed to cut costs on you know, property costs, obviously travel and entertainment, and we've cut out quite a lot of... Uh, uh, not necessary expenditure, if I can put it that way, the nice to have stuff. So we've been quite hard on ourselves and that's actually paid dividends. I think the, the whole of our, all of our people have uh, chipped in. We've got lots and lots, you know, we've done lots of consultations and we've got lots of ideas, uh, some of them brilliant ideas that we hadn't even thought about and that's made a big difference to us. EOH uh, operating as an essential service throughout lockdown. Uh, the, the, the work environment that you're seeing and the trends that are being established, the, the new normal is going to be very different to what we were used to in the past. Absolutely. Um, it's amazing, you know, when only a few people are on Zoom in a meeting, it's quite disruptive. But when everyone's on Zoom in a meeting, it works perfectly. And a lot of our, our businesses, we were having some pushback on closing down offices or making them smaller as part of our, you know, saving, if you remember, at 110,000 square meters of spare space, that's half of Santon City. And uh, we've saved just over 80 million rand annually so far, but we wanted to push it further. We were trying to get up to 150 million rand. And actually out of COVID, people are saying, you know what, why should my guys or ladies travel all the way from, from Pretoria into Four Ways or Santon when they can work just as well 
at one of our offices in Pretoria or at home. And so you can already see there's a change where obviously some cases having people, you know, face to face is better, but people have realized you don't need it all the time. Certainly if you're coding or you're doing some work or you just going through a perfect, you know, an actual work meeting, you don't need to be face to face. This is good enough. Um, and that's been a big, a big learning. And so we are going more aggressively on that. And, uh, you know, people, we did a survey and 50% of our people said they're happy working from home permanently. Another 35% that said they'll do a hybrid. There was only 15% of my, of my people who actually want to go back to work. So you can see it's, it really has changed a lot of things and it's, it's given people a lot of time. I think we've done more work in the last, we've achieved more in the last three months than we achieved in the previous six months just because it's been so efficient. And, and just on that note, having done the, the staff survey, the morale coming out of COVID, um, returning to normal from a salary perspective, how do you feel the group is feeling at this point? Yeah, listen, the, the salary cuts were tough, okay? What we were lucky to do was uh, we managed to get some pension fund holidays and things like that. And when we did the calculations, most people were only 5% worse off on take-home cash but they weren't paying for petrol, uh, obviously spending less because they were indoors. Um, and um, so, so what we did for June, because you know, people had really done well at saving costs, we reduced that to 10% for everyone, obviously except the ex-go and the board, who's, who's still on 25% for, for June. And, um, and, and also we've now been able to stop it, but also because TERS you know, finishes at the end of June. So the government supports, you know, stops. So I can't expect my staff to take over the government support. So we'll, we'll, you know, reorganise that and just be vigilant on, on, on how we take it forward. Stephen, visibility going forward. Are you out of the woods as the EOH group? Uh, Bronwyn, the, the future, obviously, with COVID is a little bit un uncertain or a lot uncertain. One doesn't know. Obviously, I'm feeling much more comfortable that we've weathered the, the first half of it. We're in a much better shape, as I said earlier. The issue is, is that you can never measure success or failure at a point in time. Um, you can be successful and then fail. You can be a failure and then succeed. And this is a, the big lesson I had to learn when I first became a CEO about, oh, it was about 12 years ago when I had to lead ABSA CRB, is that I, I wanted to go in there and get it done, you know, get it finished, get my job over type thing. And you realize very quickly that every day there's a new thing you have to deal with. Because we can't just pay the debt back and then sit, on, you know, sit back on our laurels. We need to improve. We need to get better. We need to come up with new ideas. We need to come up with new products because we want to be the number one for our customers and we want to be the number one place for our employees to, to work. So your job's never finished. This is just phase one. There's going to be phase two, phase three, phase four. And it'll carry on after me as we try and make this, you know, the best RCT business in uh, South Africa.